Hi, friends. Um, this is a first for me. I've never uh, preached in a hundred, uh, more than 180 degrees around. Um, as you have noticed, probably in the past, I kind of stick to the the music stand facing frontward. So if I don't if I don't talk to y'all over here and I don't talk to y'all over here, it's nothing personal. I'm just I'm out of my comfort zone a little bit. Uh, in all honesty, though, I have loved. Uh, worshiping in this way over the last three weeks. I have been talking to the staff about it and I, um, some of the people on staff and just that uh, ever since I graduated college, this has probably my, have been my favorite three weeks of worship um, that we've done as, as just the voice of the church comes together um, to sing and proclaim loudly that Jesus is Lord and to worship him as one voice has just been uh, truly a blessing to me. Um, just to, I, I don't know, I, it's just such a blessing to hear um, you all in this way. Thank you, and I mean this sincerely. I mean this with everything. I thank you for lending your talents to the community uh, uh, of just singing and worshiping loudly. Um, you are a blessing to me, and I'm sure other uh, parts of the body of Christ as well. Uh, I just want to give a quick welcome to everybody who's watching us online, tuning in. Thank you so much. Everybody who's on the east side, thank you uh, for being here as well. Today, we are in 1 John chapter 1. So if you have your Bibles with you uh, or on your phones, you can go there now. If you don't have a Bible and you want one, we have some free um, Bibles up at the Hub. And it will not uh, disappoint me. It will not make me feel bad if you leave right now to go get one of those for you to have. Uh, while you're going there, let's talk about darkness for a second. Let's talk about darkness. We've talked about it all day so far, but let's t- spend a little m- more time talking about that. The author of 1 John makes two claims of who God is in this book. In this little book called 1 John, he makes two claims. The first is that God is light. In the first half of the uh, First John, he talks about God. God is light. In the second half of 1 John, he talks about God is love. So 1 John is making the claim God is light and God is love. Darkness is a scary thing, right? I'm sure as we've all grown up and when we were a kid, uh, darkness is one of our first fears, right? I remember being a little child and being so afraid of my basement because the lights didn't always work and it was really dark. And so sometimes I had to climb up all the stairs on all fours to get out of there as fast as possible, right? Darkness can just be a scary thing. It's one of our first fears in life. I was absolutely convinced that this was the case um, for baby August. I was convinced that he was afraid of the dark. Every time we would take August into a dark room in order for him to nap or in order for him to sleep, uh, he would immediately just start bawling and crying. I, I didn't really know what it is. I, I thought it was that it was this darkness. He did not like the darkness. Every time I would turn on a light, the crying would cease. It would stop almost immediately. It was amazing. Uh, I was convinced it was his fear of darkness. But Abigail actually did some research, right? And I guess uh, research tells us that uh, it's uh, almost impossible for babies to be afraid of the dark. That that is not one of our fears. They cannot be afraid of the dark because the vast majority of their life up to that point, they had been living in all darkness, right? They were molded by the darkness. From what I've been told, the womb is a pretty dark place. But I was not convinced. I wasn't convinced of this. I would turn the light off and he would immediately start crying. I turned the light on and he would be fine. Off You know, screaming and crying and just a perfect storm, right? And then I would turn it back on and a perfect, perfect, adorable, spectacular baby would show up right in front of me. I wanted to catch this on video for y'all. I really did. I wanted to catch a video of this happening. And uh, Abigail so lovingly uh, reminded me that it's probably not the best idea to film August with a specific intent of watching him cry. And definitely not for us to show that to a large audience of people either. That's probably not the best idea. We don't want August to have videographic evidence of like trauma to show to his therapist later on in life. Right, we don't want to just give that to him. He's got to work for it. No, darkness is a scary thing. Even as we grow into adulthood, it's scary because darkness brings about the unknown of our, of our surroundings. Right, darkness brings about the unknown into our immediate vicinity. 
If we can't see what's around us, we don't know what's going on around us. We don't know the reality of the situation whenever there is darkness around us. We can't see that and everything. Uh, uh, just uh, We lose the sight of all reality whenever we cannot see, whenever we do not have the light around us, whenever we have darkness. It's like when you go down into a deep cave, and I love that they do this. It's a little bit scary, but when you go down to a deep cave, right, and they, tr- and they show you like the natural lighting of the cavern, They'll turn off all the lights, and you'll put your hands in front of your face, and you know that they're there, but for some reason you have no, like there's no, nothing to tell you that they are actually there. You can't see them at all. At first you think, oh wow, this is, this is pretty cool, this is kind of cool, and then like <laughs> immediately within a millisecond, like the creepy crawly thoughts start uh, coming in. It's like, oh no, this is how I get robbed, this is how I get murdered, this is how a bat flies out of the cave and starts to eat my face, right? All of these irrational fears start coming into place as the lights turn off, and you start going, please, 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 please turn the lights back on, please. The lights come back on and everything is normal and there are no bats eating your face and you're fine and the fear has left your body. Darkness has a way of messing with us because our sense of reality comes into question. The unknown starts to creep in and we lose control of our surroundings, which is why I think that First John begins this letter, begins this, uh, uh, really it's a sermon, he begins it by saying and, and confiding within us that uh, God is light. God is light. Light, right, as definition, brings about truth and brings about reality to every situation. And I want to go over a bit of a background information to why uh, 1 John specifically talks about light really quickly. The author of 1 John is writing to the churches, uh, the house churches in Ephesus. Right, because they have had, they have been uh, false teachers have come into the ranks and can, have come into the church in order to, uh, to spread lies and to spread some heresy about Jesus to these churches. They have abused these churches' acts of hospitality, inviting them in in order to spread uh, bad news about Jesus. These false teachers have been preaching and teaching and proclaiming that Jesus Christ was not God. Right In the first church in Ephesus, they were preaching and proclaiming that, that Jesus was not God. And if he was God, right, like there was a whole other group of false teachers that were saying, if he is God, if Jesus was God, then he truly wasn't a human being uh, who came to the earth. Two heretical and just flat out wrong things were being proclaimed and it was causing havoc within these house churches. It was causing absolute destruction uh, um, and just distraction within these churches and within these homes. It was causing exactly what darkness brings about, chaos and disorder and unknowns and fears and a misunderstanding of reality. That's what was going on within these churches, within these house churches. So first John writes this letter and the first thing that he does is proclaim truth into that darkness is to proclaim uh, a truth into those lies uh, to to bring the light of Jesus and take out the darkness that they have been proclaiming. First John chapter 1 verse 5 says this. This is the message that we have heard from him and declare to you God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If there's one thesis in the first half of 1 John, if there's one central point that John wants us to pick up, if there's one central theme, one central sentence to memorize and ingrain within our hearts and minds, it's this, is that God is light. He is light. He's not only the thing that drives out the darkness. He's not only the thing that, that drives away fear and darkness and brings about an illumination of reality, but he is the reality of life. God is the reality and the truth of life. He is the truth. He is what life is based off of and what life is brought from, right? And anything other than that truth, anything other than the light of God is darkness. Anything other than that would be a lie. God is light is the umbrella for which 1 John kind of forms itself. It's the umbrella for which he bases his next thoughts on. So we have God is light is kind of like our main thing throughout this. And, 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 And then under that umbrella, 1 John gives us three truths and application about what it means that God is light. Based on that, here are the three truths that 1 John gives us. The first one, no darkness can be found in God. No darkness can be found with God. The second one. We live in darkness because of our sin. We'll go over that a little bit later. We live in darkness because of our sin. And the third thing, the third promise that First John gives us is that Jesus Christ is our advocate. 
He brings us to light by purging out the darkness within us. Uh, let's start with the first, pl- uh, first piece that's under that umbrella. No darkness can be found in or with God. Let's read uh, verse 5 uh, one more time. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. If we are living in darkness, we cannot claim, we cannot claim uh, fellowship or relationship or friendship with God. If we are walking along the path of darkness, if we are walking along this path, it's promised here that we cannot claim to have fellowship with God, with Jesus, if we are walking in that darkness. And in this case, as the author will soon say uh, shortly, our way and life of sin is what brings us into that dark path is what brings us into that darkness. Our life of sin is what gets us walking into darkness. So to put that all together really quick for you, if we sin, we allow uh, darkness into our journey, and when our journey becomes enveloped in darkness, we cannot have fellowship with, relationship with, friendship with Jesus, because as verse 5 states, in him there is no darkness. They are inseparable. Light And darkness cannot be in the same space. Which makes sense, right? If we were in this room, all the lights go off. If we would turn on a lamp quickly, uh, the darkness would disappear. If you're in a dark room, you turn on a lamp, the darkness then disappears out of that room. It's like it was never there in the first place. Because, by definition, darkness is not a force. Darkness is not something that's attacking. It's not something that is uh, invading or attacking the light. Darkness in and of itself is uh, literally just the absence of light. Right? By definition, it is the absence of life and, our light. And so, as we have seen, it would make sense that if our journey has darkness in it, then that means that we have the absence of, light, of the light of Jesus within us. Or the absence of the light of Jesus within us. Let's continue verse 7. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Hang on to that. We'll go back to it soon. Verse 8. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not within us. Ouch. Okay. It's a little bit too early for that kind of talk, I feel like. It's, it's hitting pretty hard and pretty quickly today, First John. What are you doing? I think there's some self-assessment to do uh, today. There's some self-assessment to do, and I think it'll be a pretty quick one. When we think through our lives and we think through the things that we have done wrong and the things that we have done right, we know that there's the presence of darkness within it. We know that there's the presence of sin within our lives. When we do an assessment of even the last week or the last couple hours, we know that we have sin within us. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and thus spend some time of our, on our everyday journey walking in the darkness. We miss out on the fullness of life that is found in Jesus. We lose out on a perf- perfect, holistic friendship and relationship with him as we choose and as we walk in the sin and darkness. And I don't know about y'all, but that darkness can be heavy. That darkness can weigh us down on our shoulders. And I think if we're all honest with each other today, I think that we would say that we all have experienced the weight of the chains and the shackles and the sin has placed upon us. Or sometimes that we have placed upon ourselves through walking in this darkness. Whether it's through habitual sins that put more and more and more daily weight upon us or something else. We tend, whenever we're walking in darkness, to feel broken and we feel ashamed and we feel discouraged and defeated and alone. So how do we move forward? How do we move forward? If we've recognized this brokenness within ourselves, if we recognize this darkness within ourselves, how do we move forward? How do we be go, uh, go beyond living in darkness? How do we go from living in the darkness to living in the light? Thankfully, 1 John does not leave us stranded in the darkness. 1 John gives us um, some truth and some encouragement and some applications to get us out of the darkness. Verse 9 says this, If we... 
confess our sins. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. This verse is saturated with promises. It is saturated with the truth. These aren't just flimsy, breakable things. It's saturated with promises. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and will forgive. There is no middleman or middle room sort of uh, room to budge here. Right, will forgive, is faithful, moving out of the darkness and into the light, begins and is saturated with confession and repentance. Confession and repentance begins our journey from walking from the darkness into the light. This past year, we have been walking through what it means to be a fully fledged, all, everything or nothing in out. Uh, nothing at all, wholehearted disciple of Jesus. We talked about what it means to deny ourselves, what it means to take up our crosses, what it means to do those things daily. And today we take up the last leg of the journey of becoming a disciple and we talk about what it means to follow Jesus. We, we're going to start talking about what it means to actually literally take step by steps following in the direction of Jesus. Choosing not ourselves to follow, not the world to follow, not even our friends and family to follow, but rather only allow to uh, follow Jesus wholeheartedly. To let Jesus Christ call all the shots to set the direction, to set the destination, and to set the pace at which we get there. We follow him completely. That's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. And a key piece, maybe even the key piece of being a disciple of Jesus is following him. It is making the decision to follow the light and the Savior of the world and abandon the darkness that has led us down path after path after path of darkness and destruction. To be a disciple is to choose the way and the light of Jesus every single time. And the first step in that following is to bring our inner darkness into the light through the confession of our sins. It is to bring that darkness into the light through confession of sins. Our sin brings us and keeps us in darkness. And the only way to evaporate that darkness, the only way for that darkness to disappear in our lives, is to bring it into the light through the confession of our sins to God and then to others. Light has a healing property to it. Have you noticed this? When we walk in today, there was a certain lull within the people as it was dark outside, rainy and gloomy. There's just something about the lack of sunlight and the lack of light that does something to our inner body, right? To our body, it makes us feel worse. It makes us feel tired. It makes us feel sad. Light, though, has a healing property to it. As we begin to lose hours of sunlight as humans, we just, we feel worse. We can't explain it. I'm sure somebody can explain it, but we tend to feel worse Whenever we turn our clocks back an hour, we start to see the damaging effects of lack of sunlight in others and even more so within ourselves. It's why there's such a term as seasonal depression because during this time of year, during these times, uh, anxiety rates and depression rates tend to skyrocket as uh, we lose more and more and more sunlight. It's as if our body is, is craving light, saying, I want light, I need more light in my life and less and less darkness. And friends, the same is true within our spiritual walk. The same is true within our spiritual journey with Jesus. Your spirit and my spirit cries out for the light of Jesus to permeate our darkness and purge it out from within ourselves. Our spirits call out for more and more of the light of Jesus within us and less and less darkness. We primarily do this calling out through the act of confession. We confess that darkness into the light and we bring that piece of darkness, that sin that has entangled us for far too long, into the light by confessing it openly to God and then to other trusted individuals. This may be the most difficult piece of the whole journey. This may be one of the most difficult pieces in traveling from darkness to light, from being a disciple of ourselves or a disciple of the world to being a disciple of Jesus. This could be the hardest piece, that darkness, that sin within us, more often than not, just has a stranglehold on our being. It just has, a, has this grip on us that will not let go. And usually that stranglehold has three characteristics of guilt 
and shame and fear. We feel this guilt because we fall short of where we want to be. We say to ourselves, how could I do this? I should know better. I'm such a failure, right? Sometimes guilt can be a godly and good thing in order to make a change, but Satan usually uses that guilt and shifts it into shame. He shifts it into shame. The devil uses that guilt and turns it into shame. He speaks to you in your negative thoughts. How could you be such a terrible person to do that? such a terrible thing? I thought you were better than that. Are you really falling to that sin again and again and again? He speaks these things over ourselves and these negative thoughts tend to form and, and just lodge themselves in our minds. And in that shame and in that guilt, fear is the third piece. Fear rears its ugly head. We start saying to ourselves, if people were to ever find out about this, I'd be ruined. If people find out, I'd be broken. No one could love me if they knew the things that I've done. No one would be with me. No one would forgive me. It's better if I keep that hidden. Keep that secret. Keep that in the darkness. Maybe it's safer there. Friends, those are lies. Those are lies. This negative self-talk, this, this, this negative atmosphere of shame and guilt, those things are alive and it, uh, lies. And in my opinion, more often than not, those lies are from, uh, directly from Satan. It is a lie in order to keep you on the path of darkness. It is a lie in order to keep you in darkness. As you walk in that sin and that shame, it keeps you in that darkness. These are lies so that you'll stay within that darkness. It is a lie in order for you to not experience the fullness, uh, the full love and the full light of Jesus Christ and the full healing and the full resurrection life that God wants to provide to you through Jesus. That is what you're offered and this darkness and these lies keep you away from it. Satan wants to keep you there, and his tools are guilt and shame and fear. But that is not what God wants for you. That's not where God wants you to stay. His tools to combat that guilt and shame and fear are forgiveness and grace and peace. He wants you to walk in the light as he is in the life, to experience that full resurrection life that he has, that life of flourishing and that life of fullness, that life of going after the other, this life of making our world a better place for the kingdom of heaven. He wants to bring those sins and that darkness out of the pit and into the light so that you can experience the full light of Jesus. We dismantle, dismantle the tools of guilt and fear and shame by the confession of our sins. And then we repent. Uh, I think there is some misunderstanding of this idea of confession and repentance. At least in my life for a long time, I felt as though confession and repentance were one and the same. They were the same thing. They held hands, all that sort of stuff. And so if I confess my sin, if I confess it, I'm just done with it. I'm good. I can walk on and never have to deal with it anymore. I also felt as though repentance was just in general like an emotion of sadness. Like I just felt bad or sad for this thing and that means that it's okay and I'm forgiven and that I can go on. But re repentance, by definition, is a continual daily process of turning away from ourselves and away from the world. Away from darkness and turning towards Jesus. I'm thankful uh, for men like Eugene Peterson who helped the understanding process of these big words come into being. Eugene Peterson was a man who, who pastored a church for his whole life. And you might know him uh, through uh, authoring and, and putting together the message version of the Bible. He was kind of the creator of that. Here's what he has to say on repentance. Repentance is not an emotion. It's not feeling sorry for your sins. It is a decision. It is deciding that you have been wrong in supposing that you could manage your own life and be your own God. It is deciding that you were wrong in thinking that you had or could get the strength or education and training to make it on your own. It is deciding that you have been told a pack of lies about yourself and your neighbors and your world. It is deciding that God and Jesus Christ is telling you the truth. Repentance is a realization that what God wants from you and what you want from God are not going to be achieved by doing the same old things, thinking the same old thoughts. Repentance is a decision to follow Jesus Christ. Friends, listen to this last sentence. Repentance sets us on the way to traveling in the light. 
It is a rejection that is also an acceptance, a leaving that develops into an arriving, a no to the world, and a yes to God. I love that poem, poem yeah, the poetic language there. Rejection that is also an acceptance. Repentance is a leaving that develops into an arriving, a no to the world, and yes to, G- or yes to God. What a beautiful picture of a brand new way of life. The way of following Jesus. We bring our sins and our darkness to the feet of Jesus through confession. And then we continually repent of our past way of life and the way we follow the world. And choose to turn towards the light of Jesus. We turn towards God and we walk in the light as he is in the light. When we talk about confession though, when we talk about repentance and darkness and sin... I don't know why it is, but there's always an atmosphere of shame and guilt that still lingers through the whole process. It lingers within the air throughout the whole thing. And even after confession is over, this shame and guilt have just has wrapped their hands around us that will not let go. And for some reason, we still feel it in our minds and hearts and souls. But I don't think that's how it's supposed to be. I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be. Confession doesn't leave us in shame. It doesn't leave us in fear. It gives us freedom, acceptance, and grace. At least according to 1 John, anyways. 1 John uh, chapter 2 now, verse 1, says this. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with, uh, with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the rest of the world. Jesus Christ is our advocate. When we confess and when we repent, there is freedom. When we confess and when we repent, there is forgiveness and grace. There is new life and new light. The old has gone. The old has passed away. And the new life is here. Because of our advocate, because of our Jesus, Jesus is someone who is for you and with you. Definitionally, an advocate is someone who is for you and with you. Someone who is committed to staying by your side. Someone who is committed to staying with you in thick and thin. An advocate in Jesus is someone committed to having your best interests at heart every single time. Confession of sins and bringing light to the darkness is not about defamation or condemnation for you. This is not a a condemning thing for you. This is not a defamation thing for you. Rather, confession is the proclamation of resurrection within you. It is the proclamation of good news. When we repent and when we confess our sins, we are giving an outward appearance of saying, I am all in for Jesus. I am all in for him. And because of that, that proclamation that you and I, we get new life through and in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, proclaiming through our confession that we will never be the same. That that sin and those strongholds and those hangups, they do not have power over us because Jesus has already done the heavy lifting. He's already done the work on the cross. And in the same way, when we confess our sins and repent, when we bring that darkness into the light of Jesus, we are proclaiming that there has been resurrection in your personal own life away from your dark and dead ways and away from those things and away from the shackles and into the way of life that is only found in Jesus Christ, our Lord. At this moment, you may feel the shame of your past. You may feel the fear of confession. At this moment, that shame and that guilt and that fear may be rising up within you, welling up in your heart and mind as you think about confessing your darkness and your sin and bringing it into the light. Will God still love me if he knew these things about me? Is he just going to be angry with me about the wrong things that I had done? Friends, the safest place for our confession is with the loving Father. 
safest place to bring that to is to God. So I, I'm sure as the Spirit is bringing up these, this darkness and the sin within us, you feel that shame and that guilt and that fear. But it is promised in this scripture and in other scriptures that Jesus is extending a grace-filled hand of forgiveness to you right now. And our call from him is simply to grasp it and to allow Jesus to pull us out of that darkness and into the light. We want to provide a symbolic way for you to do that um, today. For you to reach out and grab that hand of forgiveness. We want to provide a symbolic way, an actual way for you to confess your sins to God in this moment. As you came in today on your seats, there should have been these white uh, paper bags. And I want you to just grab those really quick if you can find some around. In the empty chairs, there might be some. If you uh, do not have one, I would like you to raise your hand so that we can get you one really quick. So who does not have one? Does not have one in their hand right at this moment. <laughs> There'll be people around um, to give those to you. There should also be pens, uh, probably not as many pens as there are papers, uh, paper bags. So if you could share this morning, uh, that'd be really cool too. Everybody give me a thumbs up if you're good to go. Oh, that's half. That's not good. It's not even half. That's okay. If you uh, still don't have a bag, keep your hand raised and someone will be around to get it. Uh, Spencer, there's one right there. Perfect. Okay. Like I said, we want to provide a symbolic way for you to reach out and to grab that hand of forgiveness. For you to grab that hand and be pulled out of the darkness into the light. So you have those bags with you. Here's what I'd like to do for us to do in the next couple moments. We want this room to be a room full of confession and full of moments of bringing darkness to light, of, of shackles being broken and of strongholds being brought down, a room full of dark to light moments. Here's what you'll do. In the next few moments, if there is a sin that has held you down for far too long, if there's some stranglehold, some darkness that has been in your life for far too long, we're going to ask that on this bottom flap of uh, the paper bag, that you would write those on the bottom flap of this paper bag, that you would allow the Spirit to move in this moment to bring to your mind things that, of darkness within your life that need to be forgiven. We're going to have a moment for you to do that, for you to write those things on your bag. If you're on the east side um, auditorium with us today, uh, we invite you to come on over once uh, you should have found bags on your tables. Uh, If you don't have a bag, there's some still in this room. Uh, Once you're done writing, we invite you to come forward into this room and experience this together today as one church. If you're online, we would invite you to simply comment me um, if you're feeling the urge to confess uh, to someone and there will be someone on the care team ready to talk with you. So you're going to write that on the bottom flap of the bag and uh, maybe as you notice as you don't at the front of uh, the stage, There are boxes. There's a gray box on this side, a blue box on this side. Once you're done writing those things at the bottom of your bag, would you bring those forward and drop those into the boxes? There's two up here at front and then two on the sides of the room as well. Friends, we all have things that need to come to light. This isn't a congregation and and, and you guys do it and the pastors get like a free off. No, 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 no. This is an everybody sort of thing. Everybody has things that they need to bring out of the darkness and into the light. We all have darkness and sins and strongholds that have weighed us down and held us down for far too long. Things that have kept us in slavery for far too long. For too long, you and I have felt the guilt and the shame and the fear of our past hurts and hands hang-ups and addictions. And Jesus today at this moment is inviting for you to be free to the confession of your sins. Jesus is inviting you to experience the freedom of uh, from darkness for where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So whenever you're ready, 
Uh, like I said, we have boxes that will be at the front of the stage for you to drop those bags into. We're going to go into a time of worship, and during that time, we ask that we as a church all together would come forward and bring about forgiveness and grace through the confession of sins. Um, whenever you're ready.